morning for his faithfulness. Give him praise this morning for his faithfulness. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All my days I will sing your praise. Father, we just want to thank you for this morning. We want to give you praise for your faithfulness. We want to thank you, Father, for the things that you have done for us. Thank you, Father, for not condemning us. Thank you, Father, for your love in our lives. Thank you for your grace that has found us worthy. We say thank you, Jesus. Lord, as we look into your word this morning, oh God, I pray that you please speak to every heart here this morning, including those watching online, oh God. Break these words that will come out here this morning into pieces that fit into every heart here this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Let nobody go back the same in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your word heal. Let your word deliver in the name of Jesus. Let your word bring clarity in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your word bring lifting in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your word come with provision in the name of Jesus. Let your word come to preserve. Let your word come to protect in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for answer prayers. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Come on, put those beautiful hands together for the Lord as you have your seats this morning. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory be to Jesus in the highest. God be praised forever. I still wanted us to continue in the attitude of worship. But this morning we have to still go into the word of God. So I've been talking to us about growth. And I flipped it around. I started the message of growth where most people will try to end the message of growth. But like I told us, we're coming from inside, outside in actually. So that we go deeper, we continue to go deeper. Till where God will ask me or inspire me to stop and move to something else. Praise God. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 3. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 3. The Bible says, according to his uh, divine power, God has given us all that pertain to life and godliness. Through the knowledge of him that has called us to virtue and glory. If you go on in verse 4, he was talking about the promises that God has given to us so that we can be partakers of his divine nature. I pray that the Lord will bless the reading of his word this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, every child of God, every Christian has what you need for life. You have all that you need for your spirituality as much as your secular life, in quotes. Everything has been provided for you. But sometimes uh, we don't see these things evident in our lives for one of two reasons or maybe the two of them together. You know, it's either there are challenges of which there will always be challenges. Praise the Lord. I've told us this as we're starting. Let me ask your neighbor, do you know that there will be challenges? Or you think because you're a Christian there will be no challenge? Come on, say it. Ask that neighbor now. You think because you're a Christian there will be no challenge? Praise God. Did you get response from that neighbor? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise God. Of course, when we surmount our challenges, what happens is that we would have grown a level higher. Praise God. We would have grown a level higher, even if you call them problem. I don't have problem. When people call me and say, Pastor, there's a problem. I say, no, there's no problem. There is just a challenge that we need to overcome. And when you overcome that challenge, you discover that you would not be at the same level that you used to be. You must have learned something different. You must have learned how not to do something. Praise the Lord. Another thing also is that it could be a struggle. Now, if it is a struggle, that's where there is a bit of a problem. Hallelujah. It will be, as a child of God, as a Christian, you are not meant to struggle. You can face challenges. Mark my word. Write them down if you are writing. As a child of God, you are not meant to what? To struggle. You can and you should actually have challenges if you want to grow. Now, struggle, I mean, there are some things with struggle. The Bible says in Hosea chapter 4, verse 6 or 6, 4, thereabout. The Bible says that my people perish for what? For lack of knowledge. 
So if you are struggling in life, it's because your knowledge is not enough. That's why you are struggling. Praise the Lord. Praise God. I pray that God will open us up this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, don't, don't get me wrong because some people will say, oh, if it's about knowledge and we're talking about Jesus Christ here, I have everything, everything should know. Knowledge is a continuum. Knowledge is what? Is a continuum. It continues. In fact, no, an idea to say, no pastor, no geo has the full knowledge of Jesus. Nobody, as long as you are still in this flesh, you don't have it. You remember what the Bible says? I think Second John chapter 3, verse 2. The Bible says, we don't know what we shall be like. But one thing we know is that when he appears, what, we, we, we shall be what? We shall be like him. That is when your full knowledge of Christ will come. Nobody now, I dare say, and I'm serious about it. No man on earth here has the full knowledge of Christ until we see him face to face. That's when we know who he is like. Praise the Lord. I'm going somewhere this morning. Knowledge is a continuum. So it unfolds as you search and peruse. The person that ministered to us last week, Sunday, was telling us the need for us to search. Some of us don't know what is in our Bibles. Some of us don't know what is in our scriptures. So somebody can just meet us on the way and say something. Because we don't have anything to say. We just say, mm, mm, like that. You know, there is a religion. And I, I, I think I, I respect them a lot. But the challenge also is because they don't know what is written in their book. The book they carry around. If the book I carry tells me that Jesus is the light of God, Jesus is the word of God, Jesus is the spirit of God, who else will I follow? But because they don't even know what is inside. Just like they don't also know that their book also, you know, tells them to do some things, which I will not mention here. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Let me tell your neighbor, say, know your Bible. My people perish for lack of of knowledge so anybody can just you know let's look at Ephesians chapter 4 Ephesians chapter 4 from verse 13 Ephesians verse, uh, chapter 4 from verse 13 the Bible says till we all come to the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God who was Paul Apostle talking to here where are these people who are these people now? Eh? The Ephesians. Uh, who are the Ephesians here? Yeah? The Ephesian Christians. The, so if you want to grow, one of the things you need to start doing is stop, stop um, removing or distancing yourself from the word of God. That when the word is coming, you say, no, I'm bigger than that. No, you are not bigger than the word of God. You are not. All the things that we read in the scriptures, they were addressed to Christians. We need to have that understanding. Till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. So nobody has the full picture of what Jesus looks like until we see him face to face. So what we continue to do is to continue to learn, to search, to study more, to know him. That's what we continue to do. To a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Till we get there. Let me tell your neighbor, say you need to grow. You need to grow. Verse 14. That we should no longer be children. Tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. By the trickery of men. In the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. So, stay in verse 14. So, what that simply means is that. If you, you are still being carried away by every wind of doctrine. Today, somebody tells you that you have to clap your hands three times before Jesus can come. Tomorrow, somebody tells you that, oh, there is a particular kind of clothes you have to wear before Christ can come. That person is still a child. Because that person is being blown to and fro with every wind of doctrine. That person is not growing in any measure. That person is not growing in any measure. You know, I'm, I'm hoping that, that church leaders can come together and study this scripture. Verse 13 says, till we all come to the unity of faith. 
That is to say that we will not have any, any differences or any discrepancies about the person of Jesus. We will, not, we will not be different when it comes to the basic things that bring us together as Christians. Oh, somebody say, I am due respect to every denomination. I'm not a denominational person. I found grace in God to be pastoring and redeemed. Glory be to God for that. But I don't care about denomination. When you get to heaven, God will not say you attended redeemed. Go to my right hand side. If that's your reason for coming to this church, you have missed it already. That, oh, because I attended redeemed, then God will say, come to this, uh, to this place. Or whatever the name of church that we attended from different places that we came from. Till we all come. Look at it. It says, verse 14. Go back to verse 14, please. It says, uh, being carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men. Do you know what men, do you know what we do? As pastors, as church leaders, do you know what we do? If somebody is angry now with the way I preach or the way I minister, then they will say God has called them. Then they will go and start another church. Then they will look for something that we are not doing in our church here. They will add to their own. So that they can... What, what, I love one scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 23. The Bible says that you've been bought with a precious blood. Don't enslave yourself to other men. So what we see most times is that a man somewhere will just change some things. Of course, even if somebody wants to steal, some people say they still find a scripture. People have said they, every kind of word is in the Bible to support whatever thing you are doing. <laughs> That's why you need to study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that needs not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of, let me complete it now, if you know the scripture. Let me tell your neighbor, say know the Bible. If you want to grow, that is the beginning of growth. Somebody can speak in tongues. I don't care. Somebody can shake like ten times and say, oh, the Lord said. I don't care. I'm looking at the deposits of God's word in your life before I can listen to you. I've told us here severally. Don't let any prophesy papa deceive you. No, study the word of God. God can visit you. God can speak to you. You don't need anybody to jump up in congregation and say, I'm, your, I'm on your streets now. Uh, your number, who cares? Who does that help? People get to church, no word, no nothing. Somebody just jumps out. They don't even attend the praise and worship because they are bigger than God. And praise and worship is the food of my heavenly father. Praise God. When you pray, there are angels. God has a system tell your neighbor, say, grow up. God has a system in place. When you pray, God does not do anything. God has a system in place, a system of angels that will go to dispatch answers to your prayers. How did I know that? It's in the, it's in the scriptures. But when you worship, the Bible says, God inhabits the praises of his people. Come on, somebody, worship God for one minute. Give God your worship for one minute in this place. Give God your own diluted worship in this place. Give him your worship in this. Give him your praise. He's the king of kings. The lord of lords. The I am that I am. The one that can say and it will happen. The one that can declare and it will come to pass. The one that can shut a door. No man can open it. The one that can make dead and make alive. That is God almighty. That is God almighty. The King of Glory, the Lord of Lord, the I am that I am. Pareka shakatali baya, ibrazu ketelege debo sataria, imbadu zakatali be ketebo sataria. Rege debo santali bare katari baya, ibrazu ketelege debo shatala bado se ketebo sham. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Look, I say is that we should no longer be tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men. In fact, I like what Paul has, stay in this scripture. I love what Paul, Paul Apostle say in, in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2. Second Corinthians, it says that we have denounced or renounced the uh, the let me give, give me that scripture first. Give me the scripture. I want to quote it rightly. 
the hidden things of dishonesty. Second Corinthians 4 2. But we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully. Do you know that there are so many men of God using God's word to deceive people? Do you know why people are being deceived? Because they don't know the word. They don't know the word. I want you to help me preach to your neighbor in 30 seconds. Say please. Please say after me now. Say please. If you have misplaced your hardcover Bible. When you get home today. Go and search it out. Get your marker. And mark them the way we used to do. When we are studying the word of God. Say, I pray for you in Jesus' name. That you will do it. When you don't know the word of God, what you are left with, you know that I can come at now and say, Ooh, hey. God told me there are 10 persons here with $1,000 in their pocket. It's a lie. God does not tell anybody that. It's not true. It's not true. What I believe is that God can inspire a man of God. Oh, we need money for this project. Just come now. Tell the people. We need money for this project. Somebody was telling me, you know, how men of God will arrange. And then the man of God will come. He said, man of God, did we discuss anything? Did we see anything? And that one will be saying no. Hellfire. <laughs> Revelation chapter 21, verse 7 or 8. The Bible says, all liars. All liars. They shall find their path in the lake of fire. I said, did we discuss anything? Did I mention anything? It's a lie. Oh. The percentage is 60, 40 or 70, 30. They use you to raise money. But you too, when they say we want to do something in church, you will not give. Until somebody come and shake and say, oh, there is anointing upon me. Which year yeah, yeah, anointing? Praise God. Oh, yeah. Let me tell your neighbor, say, grow. grow. Verse 15. Ephesians 4, 15. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him, into Christ. That is the earth. So, if you are still being carried, I'm still teaching you the basics of growth. We've not entered into the message of growth. I'm still teaching you the basic things. So, one of the things you need to do first is to go back to your word, to the word of God. And study. Study God's word. Have a time. I was telling the workers this morning. If you are a Christian, you don't have a time that you study the Bible. You are not a Christian. You are not. You don't have a time that you pray. You don't have a time. You know, most people are guilty of this. You want to sleep on your bed at night. Then that's the time you pick your phone and then you will be watching reels. You know, they are messing up. They keep messing us up. They are messing us up the more. Praise the Lord. You check reels. They've helped us also on YouTube. They put shots. You just you know that when you step into that thing, I'm confessing myself too. Praise the Lord. Once you step into, you know you just continue to go on. Are you not a witness? Why are you pretending? You just continue to go on like that. Before you know it, some people will sleep off there. So Christians are going to bed without praying. They went to bed with reels. So you now wake up, you said you have a nightmare. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Ah. Let me tell your neighbor, say, grow up. <laughs> All right. You see, Paul appears to call those people carnal Christians. So a Christian can be carnal. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1. And I, brethren, could not speak to you as to spiritual people, but as to carnal, as to babes in Christ. Verse 2. I fed you with milk and not with solid food, for until now you were not able to receive it. Even now you are still not able. 
Verse 3. For you are still carnal. For where there are envy, strife, divisions among you. Uh, Paul was mentioning these things. They did not have reels at that time. They didn't have shots. They didn't have YouTube shots at that time. Eh? They didn't have all those. They didn't have Facebook at that time. Eh? They didn't have... Uh, <laughs> eh? Evokus. Even phones. Hey, is your, is your phone you are watching reels now? Thank you for confirming. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I think we were still in Belgium when um, uh, there's this one now. Uh, Snapchat came out. So somebody told me that there's Snapchat, so I downloaded it. My first day on Snapchat, I saw somebody like this. <laughs> That was the only day I didn't. I was like, "What is this?" <laughs> There's another one now. TikTok. You see, even see old people. They be dancing, they doing all sort of things. They don't have time for the word. No time. And you, you, you know that we are the ones contributing to all these pastors faking us. Because you, you don't have time to study God's word. Yet you want to hear from God. You now idolize one person. So when that person too is not hearing now, you know, <laughs> I've seen pastors who, when you get to some pastors, they'll just, they'll psychologically look at you first and say, ah, this person must be suffering. Or some, not you, in Jesus' name. <laughs> <laughs> then they will now start and start to tell you some things. And then you too will now be like, hmm. You too will now say, hmm, I'm connecting the dots. Which dot are you connecting? <laughs> oh. <laughs> For you are still carnal. There are where there are envy, strife, and division, let me put our own. Facebook, Instagram, hmm? all those things. Uh, people, you'll be shocked that people still come to church. They still go to club. You'll be shocked. You know that if God were to be man, some hands that we lift up on Sunday, we'll just be cutting them. We'll just be cutting them away. Praise God. <laughs> Give me verse 4, please. For when one says, I am of Paul, another, I am of Apollos, are you not carnal? When you, some people carry one church. Do you know that some people can fight for men of God, but they have never fought for Jesus? <laughs> they say, oh, he's talking to my man of God. He's talking to my woman of God. But yet, they cannot stand for Jesus. They are discussing in their place of work, in their school, uh, they are talking some things that are not pleasant about Christianity. They just sit down there and uh, you are part of them. You can't even stand for Christ. We ask people to put program in church on their status. They cannot put it. Because you don't know, you don't want people to know that you are a Christian. That's why. Because you want to, you have the things that you put on your status that your fans like. You can't put that of Christ. You know, that statement is very interesting. Jesus Christ said, it, it did not say he won't do anything about it. He said, if you deny me here on earth. He said something. He said, I will deny you before my heavenly father. Now continue listening to grace preachers. Though. It's because they don't know the truth of the word of God. We, we did not receive the grace. Um, Romans chapter 6, I think. Paul Apostle was saying that, do, have we received the grace of God so that we can continue to sin? No, that's not. We received the grace of God to live a higher life. Receive grace to live a higher life. Hallelujah. I like the way Paul put it in Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 12. Hebrews 5 12. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God and you have come to need the milk and not solid food. 13. We are going to 14. The last verse actually. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness. You don't know how to apply the word of God. You don't know what the word of God means. If you still continue, if you are continuing to stay on just what you read on the surface of the Bible, you have not arrived at all. You have not even started the level of growth at all. There is something more than what is written on the surfaces of the Bible, of the Bible pages. You remember, I think, 2 Corinthians, uh, maybe chapter 3, Paul Apostle was talking about the letter killet. It is the spirit that gives life. 
So if what you are reading is just what is on the surface of the pages of the Bible, there is no revelation jumping out to you. You aren't growing at all. You are not growing at all. That's why some people that pose themselves as if they, are, they have received revelation will come and deceive you. Tell your neighbor, say, if you are deceived, it's your fault. It's your fault if you are deceived. Because you have refused to grow. The letter killeth. It is the spirit that gives life. The spirit comes out of the word and interprets the word for you, to you. John chapter 14 or 16 or chapter 14 or chapter 16. John, uh, 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 Jesus was saying that there are so many things I want to tell you now. But because they don't have the capacity to carry it at that time. So he said, I will send the spirit of truth. He will not tell you his own things. So where is the place of the Holy Spirit? If I just need to read the Bible and just move away. No interpretation. Nothing is coming out to me. No spiritual manifestation. I pray that you will break out of the shackles of denominations first. You know, some people are so much into denomination that they can't even fellowship. Any denomination that you attend, you can't fellowship with other Christians. You need to check it well. Because what will Jesus do now? <laughs> Jesus that brought all of us together. Any church you attend, you can't fellowship with other Christians. You need to check it well. You need to check it well. Praise the Lord. It says, unskilled in the word of righteousness. For that person is a babe. Verse 14. But solid food belongs to those who are full of age. That is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to, dis to discern both good and evil. To discern both good and evil. This is another, another one that is very, very serious and important. Do you know that the sense of good and evil has been corrupted in the world? And you, because you want to rub on somebody's emotion, you don't want them to see you as a bad person. You continue to agree with the world standard of good. You continue to agree with the world standard of good. You remember, somebody came to Jesus and said, Good master, what did he say? Come on now. Come on now. We have not read that place. Eh? He said, no one that is good, Abby, that the only good person is what? The standard of good comes only from God Almighty. So, I don't care. You know when people are talking about climate change? Yes, I'm a, I'm a scientist myself. I, I'm, I, I'm not quick to agree with them. You know what I'm thinking? They are thinking climate change, I'm thinking end time. Because that's what my Bible says. The, Bible, the, the people in the world cannot tell me. I don't judge things by what they say. I don't care about statistics. Uh, they say this is the statistics of this. Who cares? Is it God that put that statistics there? The statistics of God, they are in the Bible. So when they say climate change, this and this. No, 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 no. I'm a, I'm a scientist, yes. But I'm not quick to agree with them. I am quick to agree with who? With God. Because God spoke about those things already long time ago. But if you did not even read the Bible, how would you know? So they say it's climate change. You two, you join them. Say it's climate change. They said tomorrow it's not climate change. Politicians, they are just using you to make more money. That's all they are doing. They say they want to do this. They want to do that. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I know I'm speaking a lot of things this morning. God will help us in the name of Jesus. Praise God. You need to grow. You need to start changing the world standard. It does not anything. If people tell me something sometimes, I say no. I need to. I'm a Christian. I have to first think and reason like a Christian. I don't jump to reasoning as the world. I don't care who. I don't care what. My reasoning first is as a Christian. And my standard is the Bible. It's not what, what somebody has done. Or what research that is popular. Or that somebody has done. No. My art book, my manual is the Bible. Praise God. Let me tell your neighbor, say grow. Let me tell you something that you are not also putting into consideration. 
when you are accepting the findings of the world, when you agree with the postulations of the world, you are actually positing yourself against God. That's what you are doing. James chapter 4, verse 4. Let me show us one scripture. James 4, 4. Adulterers and adulteresses. I'm going to, do you guys have the Passion Translation there? I want us to read this word very clearly, but I'll read this first. Adulterers and adult, adulteresses, do you, do you not know that friendship with the world is, is it Christian, we are quick to think of sin, 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 sin. No, it's not only when you are sinning that you are a friend with the world. No, when you agree with worldly terms, when you agree with worldly conduct, when you agree with the way the world system is being operated, you are a friend to the world and you are an enemy to God. It says, friendship with the world is enmity with God. And whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. I want to read the Passion Translation to us. If anybody has the Passion Translation, you may read, please. Nobody has it. Maybe some people don't know that there's even a translation like that. <laughs> Read your Bible. Look at this. It says, you have become spiritually, uh, spiritual adulterers who are having an affair, an unholy relationship with the world. So that's what it means. When you agree with everything in the world, every concept of the world, eh? that's why they can tell you that a man is a woman. And you agree. Praise God. Hallelujah. It's not. Do you know what? Do you know that there is an agenda to control population? Do you know? You don't know. You don't, you don't. There are some research that you also need to check when you are checking world researches or research in the world. There's an agenda to do that. So that's why somebody can come and say, What, what do you think is the target? What do you think is the target? Can anybody tell me? It's to eradicate families. That's the target. Of course, if a man and a man is together, how would they have a baby? Eh? Forget all these trans or what this womb they are building and all that. All those ones will soon stop. Hmm? Praise God. You have become spiritual adulterers who are having an affair and an only relationship with the world. Don't you know that flirting with the world's values places you at odds with God? Whoever chooses to be the world's friend makes himself God's enemy. I'm not telling you to sin. No, don't sin. If you are sinning, repent. But it's not just sin. When we say this verse, people are quick to think about sin. No, that's not what he's talking about. You agree with the world's values, with the world's systems. You don't see anything wrong in it. Praise the Lord. There's one scripture I love so much in the Old Testament, Ezekiel. Ezekiel, I think Ezekiel chapter 9, either chapter 9 or chapter 11. The Bible, God sent out an archangel to go and destroy people in a particular city. And he gave them, he said, those committing the sin and those who are seeing those committing the abomination and doing nothing about it. So in the eyes of God, the sinner and the person that allows the sinner, they are the same. They are the same. So the more you think you are agreeing with the world system, you are positing yourself against the principles of God. Praise God. Praise the Lord. I'm going to wrap up. But before I wrap up, I want to just show us something. Briefly. Let's go back to that Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 5. Let's read from verse 5. I want to just tell us something about what brought us to probably, if God allows, we'll continue from there. Because I'm going to take it from 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 4. Next time we meet by the grace of God. So also Christ did not glorify himself to become high priest. But it was he who said to him, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. Six. We are going to the very... Uh, he also says in another place, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek, who in the days of his flesh, 
when he had offered up prayers and supplication with vehement cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death and was heard because of his godly fear. Though he was a son, talking about Jesus, of course, he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. Verse 9. And having been perfected, he became the author of eternal salvation to all who obey him. Verse 10. Called by God as high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. Now look at this, verse 11. Of whom we have much to say and hard to explain. I don't want to say this part. <laughs> Is anybody seeing what's on the screen? Eh? <laughs> of whom we have much to say and hard to explain. Let's read it together now so that it does not look as if I'm reading it to us. Oh yeah, let's read this place together. Everybody go. Since you have become dull of hearing. Praise the Lord. There is so much to unpack about Jesus. Much more than you can see on the surface of these scriptures. So Paul Apostle was trying to look at, okay, how can I do this? Okay, the closest to it is if I use Melchizedek to explain the person of Jesus. But he's even scared that will these people even understand? That's what he's saying here. Would they even understand? That's why he went on and on to say that you are even the milk, the little one, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten. So that's all you know since you've given your life to Christ. How many years? Is anyone about one year here? Yeah? You've given your life to Christ just in the past one year. Any one year old baby in the house? Nobody. Two years? You've given your life to Christ. It's just about two years. Two years old? Three years old? Ah, we are held also. <laughs> four years old in Christ. Four. Anybody? Four, within four years. Okay. Thank you for that, Anne. Five years old in Christ. Five years. Thank you for that, Anne. Six year old in Christ. Seven. Six year old in Christ. Thank you for that, Anne. Seven years old in Christ. Seven. Some people don't even know the year they gave their life to Christ. <laughs> because it's not important to them. That is your real birthday. That is the day you were actually born for real. So it means that we are all elders here. So how many souls have you won for Christ? Have you, has your prayer life changed from one minute to five minutes to ten minutes? Since we are all elders in the house. Hmm? How many, how many days, or when last did you, can you remember that you spent just one hour to study the word of God? Now you come out and abuse pastor. You say, ah, that pastor, because you did not know, I would they not pull the wool over your eyes? Because you don't even know the word yourself. Praise God. Let me tell your neighbor, say, grow. Let's rise on our feet. I don't know which part of the world caught your attention this morning. But the most important thing, I have made up my own mind to teach people the truth, the principles of God. I don't care, even if there's only one person left in church, I will teach the truth of the word of God. Hallelujah. I want you to pray for yourself this morning. If there is any way, anywhere that you know that you are not, if you've left your first love, I want you to go ahead this morning and pray to God. Lift up your voice and pray. I'm not really going to give you any prayer points. You've heard the word this morning. So pray for yourself. If there's any way you know that you have lost it. If there's any way you know that you have lost your relationship. God wants us to display his glory. The Bible says that the whole wide world, they are waiting for the manifestation of the sons and daughters of God. Yet you are still looking for one pastor. You are still going here and there. When you are supposed to be here, teaching people you still need teacher yourself you still need to be taught yourself and you have been five years ten years in christian in christianity you have been 11 20 years in christ what is where are your fruits where are your fruits where are your fruits can you stop abusing pastors it is because of your lack of knowledge that's why they are taking advantage of you can you take the bible for yourself can you stand up 
Can you be upstanding to stand for God? Can you grow? Can you begin to grow for God and not go to church because of the name of the church and go to church because you want to meet with the God that is inside the church? Can you begin to grow? Can you begin to grow? Can you begin to grow and say, Lord, can you, can you become like, 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 like Caleb that says, I still have strength to do more. Can you grow up? Can you grow up and stop making some few people celebrities? When God wants to make you a celebrity for him, can you grow up? Can you grow up this morning? Can you grow up this morning? Will you grow up this morning?